I'm Jake O'Neill, creator of Animographs, and this is how a fire engine works. There are many possible model variations for different needs, so I've chosen to focus on a fairly standard pumper truck designed to transport crew, tools, water, and pumping capabilities to the scene of an incident. First, let's have a look around the exterior. Warning lights designed to alert drivers for safe fire truck passage can be changed to steady beams for proper scene illumination when arriving at a destination. The pump on this truck is located midship, though front or rear mount pumps are also possible. Ample rear storage compartments turn this rig into a mobile tool shed. There are folding steps on the back for roof access where the hose bed, ladders, and more tools reside. Coming around to the front, there's an electronic speaker for various warning sounds, a pre-connected hose for quick access when responding to smaller incidents like trash or car fires. There are loud air horns that can sound as needed by the driver, and a federal cue siren, which is a mechanical device that produces the classic familiar wailing sound. Now let's go into more detail, starting with the pump. Some pumps have manual controls for every task, especially older pump models. The intake pressure gauge is a compound gauge, meaning it can show values below atmospheric pressure or vacuum conditions when sucking water up from a pool or mobile tank, or positive pressure when connected to a pressurized source, like a fire hydrant. Since the truck's engine also drives the pump, engine temperature, RPMs, fuel, and oil pressure are monitored. There's a manual engine throttle knob to control engine speed. A master pressure gauge shows how much pressure the pump is producing combined with existing pressure from any incoming water supply. Various smaller pressure gauges keep track of the many outlets located around the truck, with their corresponding pull handles or levers to open or close specific outlets. There are knobs to divert some water for engine and pump cooling, as well as pump primer controls. The tank filler knob allows incoming water to enter the built-in tank. There's an air chuck connected to an onboard air compressor. A nearby radio and speaker provides communication to the pump operator since they may not be able to see the fire scene from this side of the truck. Supplying sufficient water pressure to any number of outlets from varying supply sources is a difficult job that requires constant monitoring. So, pumper trucks may have different levels of automation to aid the pump process. A digital panel can automatically monitor engine vitals while also altering engine speed to keep pump pressure constant. Electrically controlled valves can automatically adjust to keep pressure at desired levels for specific outputs. And some of the newest systems are highly automated allowing a crew member to divert attention to other firefighting tasks. This particular pump is a centrally located midship design. It's powered by the diesel engine through the drive shaft. A metal rotating disc with internal fins called the impeller performs the pump work. The pump is rated up to 3,000 gallons per minute, which is about 71 average-sized bathtubs full of water every minute. Two and a half to three inch diameter hoses in a cross-lay compartment allow for quick access from either side and may be pre-connected for fast deployment. A smaller one and a half inch booster hose on a reel can be deployed for small fires 
or used to wash hazardous substances from a fire scene or firefighting gear after an incident. The master stream is used when water needs exceed 350 gallons per minute, which would make a hand line too difficult to control. A smooth bore nozzle can be attached for range, or a fog nozzle to create a heat barrier, for example. The master stream is so powerful that it's generally not safe for use while fire crews are inside a structure. There are additional inlets and outlets on the other side of the pump, as well as the front and rear of the apparatus. An onboard water tank is situated at the back of the truck. It can hold 1,000 gallons of water. However, even a smaller hand line hose might deplete the supply in eight to 10 minutes. The master stream would empty the tank in one to three minutes. The tank delivers an instant water supply, but crews will be hooking up to a fire hydrant for anything more than small trash or car fires. The interior of the tank is divided into sections with baffled walls to tame the sloshing water as the truck travels to and from an incident. Moving away from the pump, let's examine the rear storage area. Emergency response vehicles carry tools for the many different incidents they respond to. This truck has a basic tool selection to give you the general idea. Starting on the driver's side, there are assorted hose couplings and nozzles, and a concrete saw with gear and tool bags. The middle compartment has respirator masks, a so-called fireman's axe with the standard chopping blade on one side and a pointed instrument on the other for digging or prodding. A fireman's maul, which combines a hammer surface with a bladed side and a hook in the handle. A standard sledgehammer and a pair of bolt cutters. The last compartment has SCBA, meaning self-contained breathing apparatus, oxygen tanks, and harnesses. There are ABC extinguishers. The letters signify what class of fires the extinguisher can be used on. Class A is for items like trash, wood, or paper. Class B is flammable liquids, such as oil, gas, paint, and so on. Class C is electrical equipment. The powder in these extinguishers doesn't conduct electricity, making them effective to fight electrical fires. In the passenger side compartments, we have more hose couplings and hoses. There's lockout and tagout gear for locking and labeling circuit breaker terminals or main water valves in a building to prevent tampering during or after an incident. Power tools, extension cords, air hose and pneumatic tools, various hydraulic spreading and cutting tools sometimes referred to as the jaws of life. A purple K extinguisher, which is a dry chemical extinguisher especially suited for class B or flammable liquid fires. There are various tool cases and familiar hand tools. A hydrant bag with implements to operate fire hydrants. A high-rise kit for standpipe valves. Standpipes are pipes linked to the water main inside buildings that function as a sort of indoor fire hydrant, giving fire crews access to water in large or multi-floor buildings. The CO2 extinguisher uses carbon dioxide to effectively push available oxygen out of the way, drowning the fire. These extinguishers are used for electrical fires and sometimes liquid fires. A high-powered gas fan sits nearby which firefighters place at doors or openings to remove smoke, heat, or other combustible elements from a building. On top, there's hose beds for storing various hose diameters and lengths. An average length of hose is 50 feet. A pumper might carry something like 800 feet of two and a half inch or larger hose and 400 feet of one and a half to two inch hose. For comparison, the standard city block in the U.S. is 660 feet on one side. Also on top, there's ladder storage. On the driver's side, there are hard suction hoses for drafting. Drafting means pulling water from a standing water source, like a pool, pond, or portable tank. When multiple emergency vehicles respond to one incident, 
tanker trucks may deliver water to a portable reservoir that other pumper trucks can draft from. Now let's head to the front of the apparatus, inside the cab. The driver is tasked with safe driving to and from an incident. The large nearby switch bank governs many standard items you might find on a large truck of a similar size. There's also a push button gear shifter. A central panel with a screen monitors truck specific functions but can also control many additional presets, for example, for different external lighting schemes. A pull cord sounds the loud horns, and a foot pedal controls the previously shown Federal Q mechanical siren. The driver uses the road to pump switch to safely engage the pump when the truck is stopped. The officer resides on the passenger side and handles things like siren control, external radio communications, the public address speaker, and command laptop. There's also an officer's side speedometer. Crew members sit in special fire seats with a bracket and support padding that allows oxygen canisters to be safely worn while riding to an incident. Brackets overhead stow firefighting hard hats. There are headsets for communication, handheld radios, and flashlights for crew members.